Hello, I am David W. Parker. This is Programming Today I Learned Rails. We're going to look again at adding comments now to our posts. Um, what is an application without comments? We're going to discuss the, how we're going to do it in this application and the different ways you can do it, uh, depending on how you want to base your schema. So my name is David W. Parker. This is Programming TIL. Go ahead and subscribe and like if you enjoy content like this. And go ahead and support on Patreon if you really like me. And that would be fantastic or buy me a coffee. So here is our coverage. We have a new comments controller. I just stubbed out, and you can see this is commented out. Uh, the create, destroy, show and update. We're only gonna cover the index, but we're gonna create the model. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at it, and we're gonna go ahead and see why we designed it the way we did. So Rails G migration, create comments. So here's our comments table. It says T references commentable, null, false, polymorphic, true. I'll explain that in a minute. T references user, meaning it has a user ID. We're going to index that. The thread, the parent, then the actual content body, the deleted at timestamp, and then the timestamps. And then we're going to also add a column to our post table called comments count. So what is all of this going into? OK, so polymorphic true. In general, if you have a relationship, and I should probably write this on the whiteboard, but I'm not going to. If you have a post, you could just say this belongs to a post. And you could say has a post has many comments. Alternatively, you can say this references a commentable, or it's whatever you want to name it, polymorphic true. And what that means is it's going to create two columns for you. The first column is commentable ID. The other column is commentable type with underscore type underscore ID. And what that means is that those type ID ownership, any of those could be the, what has been commented on. So in this instance, we only have posts that can be commented on right now. But let's say we add later on, we want to be able to comment on a user's profile page or user. It would be the same table for comments, all the comments live in the same table, but we would have commentable type of user with the, that user's ID versus if you posted on, a, it made a comment on a post, it would be the commentable type of post. So what the polymorphic true allows us to do is have a singular source for all of this comment data, as opposed to having multiple tables where we might have a table called post underscore comments, and then this separate table called user underscore comments, and have those relations set up instead. So dependent on your use case, you might want to do it that way because it is easier to shard your uh, database uh, and split those out if you needed to. Maybe uh, only certain people are allowed to do certain actions, and it might be easier to lock down a table. But in general, this is a really nice, easy way to make it so you have a singular source of truth for in this case, comments. References user, that's going to be the user who made the comment. The thread is going to be the top level uh, ID of the um, comments. And then the parent is going to be the immediate comment ID above it. So in our case, and I haven't done this yet, but we are going to make it so you can comment on a comment. And that's very common in a lot of places on the internet, such as Reddit, et cetera, or really anywhere. Um, so this will allow us to keep track of the top level comment as well as the parent, the most recent uh, comment that we're commenting on. And then we're going to have a body, which of course is the data, and then the deleted at timestamp. So the reason we're going to have a deleted at timestamp is if a user goes to delete a comment, there may be sub comments underneath it. And so we can't just delete it out completely from our system. But we want to mark it as deleted. And then what we'll do is we'll clear out the user as well as the body. That's why the user is not required here. Um, and we'll just clear those out. So that way you can see that this, there were comments replied to this, but it's been, this one has been deleted. Finally, we're going to add the comments count. And that's a counter cache on the post. So that way we can always know how, exactly how many comments have been uh, posted on a given post. And you'll probably add a, a, a comments cache to just about anything. So we actually might even need a comments count on 
this uh, if we want to have the thread or parent to have its own uh, counter cache, but we didn't do that yet. So here's our comment. So you can see the commentable type of string, commentable ID of big int, and as well as the rest of the uh, information that's already there. I have this classes here of post, and I'm just freezing it. That means it's going to be instantiated once and never again. Uh, so we have this post. So right now you can only comment on posts, but later on we're going to go ahead and add comment on here, and that allows to add comments on comments, as well as three new concerns here. You can see those live up in the comments here. We also added this new folder called abilities commentable. So let's go ahead and look at the association. This belongs to a commentable and polymorphic true. So this again and counter cache true. This tells Rails, hey, this belongs to some polymorphic thing. In our instance, only post for now. And every time you make a new comment, we want to update the number of accounts to it. We're going to also say belongs to parent, uh, which is a comment type, as well as a thread, which is a comment. And it also has a belongs to user. And we're going to say optional true. So all of these are optional true in Rails, and that just makes sure it knows that it doesn't require that association. We have a couple of has minis where it has many children, and the children are the uh, immediates of the parent. So we have many children comments on our parent, and we have many descendants. Put dependent destroy here, and that is false. Those should not be deleted. This is deleted. Granted, we actually will never be deleting ours, but anyway. So, and we make sure to let it know the thread ID and parent ID are the foreign keys. Within the logic, so this is a little interesting. Let's go to validations first. Okay, I don't need this post class anymore because I have it in comment classes. So we want to have a body, always, true. We need a commentable, so you need to know what is being posted, uh, commented on. And then for the commentable type, we want to make sure it's inclusive within the classes that we have defined. So if somebody tries to post a comment on something else, um, we are going to go ahead and reject that. Let's get back here to the logic real quick. So we're going to introduce a few different uh, logics here. The first is we're going to uh, from class. So we're going to make sure we detect the proper class name. And that would allow us to do is we're going to check the commentable type to make sure that we, again, you don't necessarily need to do this because we have that validation, but what this allows us to do is uh, get out early and not wait until it's trying to add the comment. So we're going to uh, take the commentable type from our params. We have a user and the params. And then we're going to, after we found that class, we're going to go ahead and find the ID. And then we're going to call add comment which doesn't exist yet, that's an uncommentable for that um, item. And we're going to give it the params merged with the current user. So we were deleting out the commentable type, which allows us to find whether it's commentable, and then find it, and then go ahead and comment on it with the user. Delete, we will have a user, and we're just going to go ahead and find and delete information. We're going to say it's the ID with some given user. And rather than deleting again, what we're going to do is we're going to nil out the user ID, change the body to deleted. Again, we're doing this because um, we want to go ahead and say, hey, this user has deleted this, but there might be child comments. Um, we would also want to go ahead and set, set deleted at uh, time not now, which I didn't do. So it's that. And then update allows us to find it for that user. And then we go ahead and update the body. We're not going ahead and testing these yet because we're not doing these in this episode, but I'm just showing you that it's for later because we have a lot to cover. Commentable. So this is, a, again, another concern. And we're going to be putting this onto the post. So if you go here, post include abilities commentable. And the reason this doesn't live under the posts folder is because we're going to have, again, other things that are going to be able to have comments on them. And to have comments on them, we'll just go ahead and include abilities commentable, and then suddenly they can have anyone comment on it. 
So in this instance, it's going to add a has many comments as commentable, which is the inverse of the association on comment for uh, belongs to commentable. And then we have that add, co add comment function, which is right here. And that's going to say comments dot build params, save it, and then we'll return that comment. And then we also have this delete comment, which destroys right now. I didn't change it to match the proper logic. We'll actually end up just calling this one all the time. I don't even really need this anymore. We can delete it, but all right. Users, we have a new association as hell's logic. The association is we now have comments dependent nullify, meaning uh, if the user has been deleted, we will just set the user ID to all of those comments as null. Within the logic here, I just added this for others. So it's going to return a display name, ID, and slug, because they don't other users don't need to know our uh, username and our email. Within our routes here, we have the resources for our comments. And I'm going to go ahead and add all of these here, even though most are commented out, because we'll get to those in a future episode. So again, here are all of our regular actions. This should look exactly like the post controller, or more or less. Um, this is just commented out for the create, destroy, show, and update, as well as the params. And the only one that we really need or we're working with right now is the index. So we're going to have a policy scope for that index. And then we're going to go ahead and do a search. And we'll say, get the comments back from that. We'll say, hey, where the commentable ID is from parameters, commentable ID with the commentable type. We want to include that commentable. We do a, uh, a, we have eight comments. We don't have to look up eight different times for each single commentable. So it gets rid of the n plus one queries as well as the user ID. And that's because all of those live within this comment index serializer here. We have the ID, the body updated at, and we'll return again the commentable with the ID type as well as the title. Right now we can do this because we know the only commentable one that we have title is the post. Um, if I went ahead and threw this on user, this would explode because there is no title method on a user. So we'll have to change that eventually, but for now this works. And then the user, this is where we're returning that for others. I don't know if I put that somewhere else. I also put that in the post index for others. So that is why we have that extra logic there. Um, we went ahead and I created all of these E and YAMLs, even though we're not using them quite yet. Here is our comment policy. So again, living under app policies, I don't have any functionality ne needed for create, update, delete, etc. yet, but it'll end up basically looking very similar to or the same as the post. And right now, the query, we want to make sure it returns all. In our object creators here, we have a new object creator. We're going to create, we'll grab a user or create one. We'll grab a commentable or create a post. And then we'll just create the last one, giving it some given body, uh, a user comment. Uh, this is using the logic on add comment. So that is this logic here. So we have it takes in a user as well as some parameters. So we're using that within this uh, object creator here. So we're saying comment, add comment, we'll give it a user, and then a body is the commentable, et cetera. Finally, a request here. We only have one spec, and it's good for now, and it's going to return a list, a status of 200 with a list of posts. We'll create a user, we'll create a post, we'll go ahead and create a few comments with the commentable of that post for that given user. We'll go ahead and get, and we'll just go ahead and say comments with some commentable ID, commentable po uh, of type post, and then we'll get it back and we'll all see that it's three. Uh, one thing, other thing to note with these specs is of course we're not uh, testing every single little thing within the uh, serializer here. So if you really wanted to make these very expansive, you can go ahead and check the ID, 
check that all of the status of this is exactly what you expect. All of this, as well as all of these. Um, again, my rule of thumb is to make sure that you're testing the important things. So test what is important to you and your application. Anyway, that is it for this episode. It is a lot to take in, but now we have the very basics of what we need for comments, uh, which will allow us to display those on our front end uh, quite easily. So let's go ahead and dig into that in the next episode. Like and subscribe if you will, and uh, subscribe to my Patreon and all that. Thanks. Bye.